Hey there! In this video, I'm talking about the Seiko Kinetic Movement. Here I have a green Seiko watch that was given to me by my good buddy, Mr. Tim Johnson. You can find his YouTube channel linked down in the description. And while this is a handsome watch, the watch itself is not very interesting to me. What's on the inside is, and that is the Seiko Kinetic Movement. It's time for a little bit of story time now. What is the Seiko Kinetic Movement? Fundamentally, the Seiko Kinetic Movement is a quartz battery-powered watch that uses a spinning rotor to charge the battery. Now you're probably thinking, well, Paul, that sounds cool, but we have solar watches. We have all sorts of other ways to power the battery. Why do we have this? This movement goes back to the mid-1980s. In 1986, Seiko came up with this movement, and that was kind of at the tail end of the quartz crisis. If you don't know what the quartz crisis is, I'll link the Wikipedia entry for it down below. But the long and the short is that battery-powered quartz watches hit the market, and it temporarily killed the mechanical watch market. A lot of the Swiss companies went under or had to get purchased out, and battery-powered watches became the norm for a good while. It really wasn't until the last 25 years that you started to see a lot more mechanical watches because they became fancy and luxury and trendy again. This movement itself is a newer kinetic movement, but the kinetic itself goes back to 1986. And to, at the best I can tell, and this is not a thing that Seiko themselves has said, but the best I can tell is that this movement was made to kind of be a bridge from mechanical watches to quartz watches for folks that were concerned about battery changes. With having a watch that charges the battery just by wearing it, you're able to not have to worry about servicing it very much. The issue for me is that it's such an inefficient way to actually charge the, the watch. It takes, for this movement, 250 rotations of our rotor per day to charge the watch. And this watch doesn't have like a manual crank, like a, like a crank battery or something. Some of the Seiko Kinetic movements did have a manual winding mode, but for this you have to wear it a ton to actually be able to charge the battery. And that also leads into an issue with the batteries in these watches. So you'll hear people say capacitor when they're talking about the Seiko Kinetic watches, right? And I can show you here in the back. Let's, let's actually do a little look here. So we have the rotor. We have two spools of copper, which from my understanding help to act as the conductors to get the electricity into the battery. And then we have that piece right here, surrounded by red. A lot of people will call that a capacitor, but that is a battery. However, it is made a little bit more confusing by the vernacular, or the vernacular that Seiko uses. They call that a capacitor. When the original kinetics hit the market in the mid-1980s, they used a capacitor. If you don't know what a capacitor is, and I forewarn you, I'm not an electrician or an electrical engineer, a capacitor is a thing that holds onto energy and then uses it somewhere. Capacitors are generally like a smaller thing. Batteries are kind of like a string of capacitors, and I get that that's kind of really simplifying it, but the long and the short is that a battery is going to be more efficient than a singular capacitor. The old Seiko Kinetics used capacitors, but by the late 80s, early 90s, they dished capacitors for lithium-ion batteries. So what you have in most watches, what you have in your cell phone, standard lithium-ion batteries. However, if you try to buy a new battery for one of these, Seiko calls it a capacitor even though it's a lithium-ion battery. So people talk about capacitor changes, they're batteries, so I'll refer to them as batteries. One of the issues is that these are proprietary. These are not standard batteries. So if you need to service your kinetic, you have to worry about finding a specific proprietary battery for the watch. Going off of the prices I saw for these, the batteries are kind of expensive. They run anywhere from 22 to 28 bucks if you get an OEM one. But now they have the issue that Seiko didn't make a lot of these kinetic movements, or a lot of these kinetic watches, really. I've seen numbers of about eight to nine million over about 40 years. And what that means is that a lot of those lithium ion batteries are just sitting on shelves for long periods of time. If you know a whole lot about lithium ion batteries, like especially with the discussion of cars these days, they don't like to be at basically no charge. They kind of want to sit in a sweet spot of like 30 to 80% charge. And what's happening is that these batteries that should last seven, eight, nine years because they're rechargeable are only lasting about two years in a lot of the replacements I've seen. So now you've got an issue where you have a watch that has a movement that is I would say at this point obsolete. Solar has beaten the kinetic as a proper watch movement. But now also if you want to service this, you have to get proprietary batteries that are kind of crappy. And on top of servicing it, it's not like a standard quartz watch. You have to remove the rotor and a, and a handful of various components to actually get to the battery itself. 
And I've seen people screw that up pretty easily. So the Sago Kinetic Movement, what is it? It's an automatic movement that powers a quartz battery, but it's not very efficient and it's quite dated. But it is interesting, and I am someone who enjoys interesting things. Now, I'm not gonna really talk about the watch itself. I'll link Tim's review down below. But to me, this is not really my style of watch, but I can see why Tim liked it. It's fairly thin, even for a Seiko, it's fairly thin. It has 100 meters water resistance. The green dial is very attractive. And um, yeah, it's, it's very much a Tim watch. This is very much his style. Now for operating it, we have a standard push-pull crown, pull it out all the way to change the time. We pull it out partially to change the date on here. So fairly simple. I know that Tim liked the pop of red on the, hand, or on the uh, dial for the date. I think it's pretty cool. And you might be thinking, well, Paul, what is this other pusher here? What does this do? This is just a three-hander with a date. We push that pusher, and you'll see the hand jump. You're like, why did the hand jump? That's actually what tells you what your current power reserve is. The hand jumped about five seconds, and then it'll sit there for a bit until the quartz movement itself catches up to the hands, and then it keeps going. That five second jump means I've got about a day's worth of charge for this watch. 10 seconds would be two days, 20 seconds would be a week, and 30 seconds would be a month. I don't wanna have to think about how much I'd have to be wearing this thing or shaking it to get to a month's worth of charge because I can't manually you know, turn the crown to charge it. But yeah, the Seiko Kinetic. It's a very different watch, it's quite unique. I've actually written an article about the movement, which I'll link down below. That's gonna be over on the escapement room. But let me know what you think of the Kinetic. At this point, which is May of 2025, this movement is discontinued. So I think you're gonna to start to see more and more of these pop up on the used market. But keep in mind that if you wanna get one to try to wear it, the batteries kind of suck. So don't expect these to have the best longevity for batteries. And expect to pay about 10 times the cost just for the battery itself not to mention the servicing fees for removing parts of the movement to get the battery back in there. So yeah, let me know what you think of the Kinetic down below and thank you very much for watching.